Hey guys, Malcolm here with Survival Know How, and today is June 1st, which as many of you already know, marks the beginning of hurricane season here in the United States. Just yesterday, President Obama released a press briefing urging Americans to prepare for hurricane seasons, right? He's urging us to become preppers in stockpile food, water, um, medicine, you know, all the things that we would need to ride out a major hurricane or any kind of natural disaster. A lot of you don't think about this, but President Obama absolutely is a prepper. Uh, you're kidding yourself if you don't think that he has bunkers scattered throughout America and really scattered throughout the world that he can evacuate to. These bunkers are full of medicine, water, ammunition, antibiotics, everything that they would need to survive and sustain the U.S. government in the case of a disaster, whether it's natural or man-made. And he is now urging the American citizens to also become preppers. So let me play you a quick clip of what President Obama said yesterday about preparing for disasters. One of the things that we have learned over the course of uh, the last seven and a half years is that uh, government plays a vital role, but it is every citizen's responsibility uh, to be prepared for uh, a disaster. And that means taking proactive steps, like having an evacuation plan, having a fully stocked uh, disaster supply kit. So not only is the U.S. government urging you to become a prepper, they're also trying to make it as easy as possible for you to do so. If you go to ready.gov, that is FEMA's website, and it's just a treasure trove of information about different types of disasters that often hit America. FEMA also has an app that has a lot of the similar information that's on their website, but the nice thing about the app is that you can actually sign up for weather alerts. You can put your local area in there, and your phone will automatically get uh, alerts when there is a natural disaster or severe weather heading your way directly from FEMA. Very useful. But both on the app and on the website, they have a checklist of how to build your own natural disaster preparedness kit. Okay, and it quickly outlines all the items that every American citizen should have in their house to prepare for a general natural disaster. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be going over each of those items and I'll be showing you how to build your own FEMA disaster preparedness kit. Stay tuned. <laughs> So FEMA's disaster supply kit really isn't focused on any one particular type of disaster. Instead, it's a general kit that will get you through many types of disaster scenarios. So this will help you out in the case of a hurricane, a tornado, a terrorist attack, an earthquake, any of these things. Having this disaster supply kit is going to help out tremendously. So I'm just going to go down the list, go item by item. If you want to see their list for yourself, you can go down in the description. I'll have a link to where you can find it on the internet, or you can go and download the FEMA app, which I also highly recommend. So the first item is water. FEMA recommends one gallon of water per person per day for three days. So this is for sanitation purposes, for drinking, and for cooking. So if you have a family of five people, that means you need 15 gallons of water in your house, according to FEMA, so that you have enough water for three days for five people. Um, so, I bought this for 99 cents. Water is very inexpensive. Go buy 15 jugs of these, it'll cost you 15 bucks, okay? And then you can scratch that off your uh, FEMA checklist, that is covered. So, one gallon of water per person per day for three days. So the next item is food. FEMA recommends that you have at least a three day supply of food per person, okay? So it's three meals a day per person. There's a couple of different routes that you can go on this. Um, you can just start picking up extra cans like this in your grocery store when you go shopping. That's how I originally got started. Every time I go grocery shopping, I would spend an extra $5 on buying some canned goods. Um, sometimes you can find these for as cheap as 50 cents a piece. Yeah, sometimes a can like this will run you up to a dollar. So every time you go to the grocery store, five extra dollars, uh, you know, within a month, a few months, your stockpile is quickly going to grow. So you want three servings per person for three days. So nine servings per people, according to FEMA. So this is one route that you can go. Now you can also go and buy something like this. This is by Mountain House, and this is a freeze-dried meal. So this one is vegetable stew with beef. Um, so this has nine servings in it. So that would be, this would be enough food for one person for three days. You're probably going to get kind of sick of eating the same thing every day, but it's better than nothing. 
Uh, another route that you can go is getting something like this, which is an MRE, a meal ready to eat. This is what they have uh, in the military. You can get big boxes of these. These aren't too cheap though. This thing can be like seven or eight dollars, but it has a, a lot of variety in these uh, MREs, a lot of different types of meals you can get. This one's chicken noodle and vegetables and sauce. A lot of times they have um, like a cookie in there or something, you know, something sweet. They have like Gatorade packets in there. Uh, these are pretty nice and these are actually really calorically dense. Something like this, I think it's like 3,000 calories or maybe it's like 2,000 calories. It's supposed to be one meal. So it's way more calories than you actually need for a meal. So if you get a few of these, uh, if you stretch them out, this could actually, a few of these could go a lot longer than what the recommended serving is with the MRA. But this is one way to go. You get an entire meal with variety. Uh, another way is just get a cans like this of freeze-dried food. Uh, you just add hot water and you're good to go. Or you just go to the grocery store and pick up some extra cans of food. Uh, a lot of people like getting ramen noodles because they are very inexpensive and they actually kind of taste good. Uh, and they, I mean, they're incredibly cheap. You get a pack of ramen noodles for like 25 cents or something. And that's fine. You can go that route. Just keep in mind that they have almost no nutritional value whatsoever. They'll may, they may taste good. They may fill up your belly, but you, you want to eat like a serving of vegetables with your ramen noodles like because they have no nutritional value whatsoever. It's like eating cardboard. Okay, so three days supply of food per person. Next up is a battery powered or hand cranked radio. So I've actually got two examples of this. Um, here is one variation and here is a slightly smaller one. I'll start with this guy. So this guy, as you can see, has a hand crank here. It also has a flashlight built into it that uh, is also charged by cranking it. It also has a solar panel here. Uh, and this is a radio. Right? You can, it has AM, FM, um, and has different presets down here with some emergency weather stations. So this is pretty nice. Now this one uh, has a little bit, a few more features. So again, it has a crank here for charging. It has the solar charger up here. What makes this unique is that it also has a, uh, a battery bank back here. So you can put AA batteries in this and have this working immediately, whereas this, you're gonna have to crank it nonstop every few minutes or you need some sunlight. So this actually has three ways of charging, whereas this one only has two. Um, this one also has the flashlight here and it has a bank of LEDs on the back if you want kind of a broader light. Uh, I think this also has like a strobe light for, uh, there we go, to act kind of as an emergency beacon. And both of these have a USB jack here. So you can charge your cell phone or GPS or other devices directly from this. So you can use these solar panels here to charge your phone in the case of a disaster. So these are two options, two variations of a emergency radio. So I'll have links to these two radios down in the description below, as well as links to all the other products I'm gonna be talking about today. So the next item on the list is a flashlight with extra batteries. Now there's really two types of flashlights you can get. You can get a directional flashlight like this, uh, or what I really love having is an omnidirectional flashlight like this. Okay, so this will spread light in all directions. It'll really illuminate an entire room. Whereas this is just much more specific uh, if you're working on something, you need a, a direct light. Now the nice thing about this particular flashlight, it actually has two batteries in there. It takes AA batteries and also has a rechargeable battery that you can recharge using this solar panel here. Very nice. Uh, so have a flashlight. It doesn't have to be fancy. It can be a basic flashlight, but a flashlight and extra batteries for your flashlight. So next up is a basic first aid kit. So you can buy a pre-made first aid kit like this. Um, you see them for $10, all the way up to $30, $40 on Amazon uh, at different stores. Or another option is if you wanna have multiple first aid kits, you can actually go to a place like Dollar General and buy uh, each of the individual items and make your own first aid kits. And sometimes that's the recommended route if you're trying to build like, like four or five first aid kits to kind of scatter 
throw out your car, your boat, your house. You know, you can build your own first aid kits by going to Dollar General. You know, you can you can go online and you'll see what all the items are in here and just buy those individual items. And sometimes it can be cheaper than uh, buying a big giant first aid kit already made. Okay, so get yourself a first aid kit for your emergency disaster kit. So the next item is an emergency whistle to signal for help. Now you might be thinking, uh, what, what do I need a whistle for? Come on, really? But think in terms of if there is a really bad earthquake or a really bad tornado or even a bad flood or hurricane and there's just debris everywhere, right? You've seen that situation before play out on the news, I'm sure you have. So when emergency workers are shifting through piles of trees looking for survivors, one, a rescue whistle will tell them that you are still alive and two, it'll help them locate you much sooner. So the next item is a dust mask, okay? So something like this, you can buy them in bulk. Uh, you get these from dollar store, you get them from hardware stores, and this will just help give you some level of filtration. Uh, this is going to be very useful, uh, let's say in the case of a forest fire, this will help uh, filter the smoke out, uh, give you fresher air. But it's also really helpful if there is, let's say, a, um, uh, a chemical attack by a terrorist organization or there is nuclear fallout after a nuclear attack or let's say there is just a pandemic, a virus pandemic, uh, something like the swine flu or bird flu or Zika, you know, if it somehow becomes airborne, this will help filter out some of those contaminants and it will provide you with some level of filtration uh, if the air becomes contaminated. So they also want you to stockpile duct tape and plastic sheeting, okay? So this is in the case that you have to shelter in place, as they call it. Uh, if you don't, if you can't find any plastic sheeting around your house, uh, you can also use a tarp, or you can use uh, trash bags if you really had to, or even like a shower curtain. Uh, so the idea here is again, if there is, let's say, nuclear fallout or a um, uh, some kind of virus attack, like a biological attack from a terrorist organization you want to shelter in place which means securing yourself in one room and trying to make that room as airtight as possible so you take your plastic sheeting or plastic bag and you duct tape it around all your windows so no air can get in duct tape it around all your vents around all your doors even electrical sockets you know anywhere that air can seep into your home uh, you want to be able to seal that off so you can have at least one room that is completely isolated from the air outside. Uh, and again, this is really only specific to certain types of disasters, such as a chemical attack or a biological attack or nuclear fallout, uh, you know, but something like this will help keep bad air from entering into your uh, enclosed room. So next item is wet ones, also known as baby wipes and trash bags. So this is for personal sanitation. Um, so let's say you can't use the water or you, you run, you don't have any water coming into your home. You know, you won't be able to shower anymore. So that's where the wet wipes come in. Um, if you can't use your toilet anymore, you know, you, you, you gotta go somewhere. And instead of going in a corner, right, you, you got a trash bag that you can kind of contain that in one spot. If you get trapped in your home for several days, even several weeks in some situations, sanitation is going to become a huge issue. If you have poor sanitation and you don't manage it very well, um, it's very, your, your chances of getting uh, some sort of infectious disease or nasty bacteria into your system just becomes much higher. Okay, so wet wipes and trash bags for personal sanitation. So this one's a little bit more specific only to certain people, but FEMA on their checklist recommends that you have a wrench or some pliers. And this is really for you to shut off the gas going to your house. So if you get hit by an earthquake, you know, one of the first things you might want to do is turn off the gas going to your house. If you have a hurricane coming your way or a tornado, and that way you don't have any major gas leaks that could lead to fires or even explosions. So if you have um, gas to your house, having just make sure you have a way that you can shut the gas off in the case of a uh, disaster. 
So the next item on the list is a manual can opener. Now again, this one's kind of specific only to those people who are prepping by buying canned food. Uh, so don't stockpile a crap ton of these and forget to have a method of actually opening them up. So the next item is actually one that is on my personal list of the top 10 forgotten bug out bag items, and that is a local map. So this one is just a cheap one I picked up uh, at a gas station. This is the Eastern United States. I live in Maryland. So this shows all the highways, you know, from New York all the way down to Florida. So this is uh, in case you have to leave your home, uh, whether on foot or in your vehicle, you know, and you're, you can't rely on your GPS, right? You, you can't say, oh, I have a GPS on my phone. It, your phone might not always be working in a natural disaster. GPS may not be. Um, and if you're on foot, it's just going to make it that much more challenging. So have a local map of all the roads and streets in your area in case you have to evacuate and try to quickly as possible get away from the disaster area. So the last item on the FEMA disaster supply kit is your cell phone. But not just your cell phone, but also your phone and a method of charging it. Okay, so for me, my method of charging it in a disaster would be one of my crank radios that have these solar chargers on them. Uh, so just make sure you have a method like this and make sure you have a charging cable. And something that I always do before a bad storm hits me is that I always charge all my phones, right? Uh, I encourage my wife to do the same. I charge my phones as well as my laptops just so if the power goes out, I still have full battery, I still have cell phone coverage most of the time. And then I have my laptop I can watch movies on or anything like that. So that is everything in the FEMA Disaster Supply Kit. This is all the stuff that FEMA and the President of the United States is urging all American citizens to have in their homes to be prepared for any number of disasters. And keep in mind, guys, that these natural disasters, they do strike Americans every single year. Every single year you hear about either a bad tornado or a bad hurricane or a bad earthquake or a mudslide or a flood. You know, something hits some small town somewhere and it just devastates the community and it isolates people. It cuts off water supply, power supply, cuts off their access to the grocery store to get new food. You know, it, these aren't just theoretical situations. These happen to American citizens every single year. And the president is urging you guys to get prepared for them and get ready in case these things happen to you. The president and the United States government, they are preppers and you should be a prepper too. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'll have links to all of the items I talked about today in the description below. There'll be Amazon links. So if you want to start taking action now and start building your uh, FEMA disaster supply kit, you can go ahead and do that. If you like this video, I got some other ones I think you might enjoy as well. Down here, I'll have a video on how to build a blackout bag, which is just your go-to bag when the power goes out in your home. 